gave my favorite part. We had so many fun ways to learn math facts that practicing math facts was a joy and not like my experience growing up. For me, row upon row of desks with students standing beside them chanting in unison, one times one equals one, two times one equals two, three times one equals three, etc. until we knew it. Then we would graduate to two times one equals two and so on until we had mastered the 12 times tables. What I never fully understood is why we stopped at the 12 times tables. That has always seemed kind of arbitrary to me. Truthfully, I've had students who love to practice learning their math facts. Today's chat is about differentiation in math and that games are about more than just fun ways to learn math facts. Hey there teachers, Marion Busfield here with Engaging Curiosity. Thanks so much for joining me here for one of my weekly videos. As a faith-led, retired classroom and SPED teacher, my passion is to support you on your journey to calm classroom chaos and elevate student engagement in ways that free up your time outside of the classroom. Despite my passion for teaching, my transition from learning support into the classroom filled me with fear and trepidation. I knew at least some of my weaknesses and that left me with some imposter syndrome. Fortunately, as a former SPED coordinator, homeschool parent and teacher, literacy interventionist and program coordinator, and most importantly, wife to a high school teacher and mother of two, I brought decades of diverse experiences with me that I'm here to share with you. As I applied everything I learned, classroom management became a breeze and teaching became everything I had believed it could be. I have bolded it all down to five pillars of classroom management upon which everything else rests. To find out more about those five pillars of classroom management, download my free classroom management checklist. The link is in the description below. For now, let's get back to today's topic. Games are effective for differentiation in math and they are fun ways to learn math facts. And because I know differentiation can be a lot of work, later I will share how these activities help you to avoid burnout. Before fun ways to learn math facts, consider differentiation in math. Of course, you want to make it possible for all of your students to master their math facts. So the differentiation in math part is essential for the fun ways in math facts part to be effective for your purpose. A leader in the concept of differentiation in instruction is Carol Tomlinson, who is a professor of educational leadership foundations and policy at the University of Virginia. She identifies the following four ways to differentiate instruction. One is content, the what of learning. Two, process, the how do students make sense of ideas, part of learning. Three, product, the how do students show what they have learned, part of learning. Four, learning environment, the climate or tone of the classroom that makes students feel that they are safe to make mistakes and comfortable to think and process. Each of these is described in more detail in my video, 10 Powerful Ways to Implement Differentiation in the Classroom. The most effective fun ways to learn math facts. In Master Math Facts, the best easy activities for classroom math I shared, the essential and the fun ways to learn math facts. Today, I'm selecting just a few of these activities and I will connect them to Carol Tomlinson's ways to implement differentiation in math. My hope is to clarify the power in these activities as I have heard too many teachers doubt the importance of using games in math. Or maybe even worse, keep games as rewards for good behavior. Have I been emphatic enough? Games are more than just fun ways to learn math facts. They are powerful learning tools. So number one, math facts coloring pages are an all time student favorite for fun ways to learn math facts. I wrote a whole blog post showing how color by code supports math fact mastery. And there are many reasons to value color by code in the classroom, but I'm staying focused specifically on the principles of differentiation. So for content, each student can color the same coloring page design or picture, but work on a different math strategy. If you buy my Make 10 resource camping color by code and add doubles camping color by code, for example, all of your students can be coloring the same design, but be working on different strategies or facts. Contents is also differentiated because there are multiple designs for each math strategy. This allows your students multiple attempts to practice this strategy 
or for those students who master them quickly, multiple designs to choose from when they go on to the next strategy. Lastly, there are year-round themes providing lots of variety for those like me who get bored easily. Process. Simply put, coloring is more than visual than a black and white sheet of questions in a row. More than that though, your students can work on them collaboratively to add a social element for your auditory students. You can even print them as an 11 by 16 for a larger poster. Product. Make color by code a part of a choice board and then your students can choose it or something that better fits their needs. Or if you require they do everything on the choice board, they have more control over what is a color by code day and what is not. Learning environment. When you factor in engagement, choice, color, potential collaboration and self-regulation, this activity has a tremendous impact on the learning environment. And of course, because there are, there are fun ways to learn math facts, color by code impacts the learning environment, just by that alone. Two, write the room activities are one of my personal favorite fun ways to learn math facts. I have always loved the quiet social nature of write the room activities. Get students up and moving rather than being tied to a desk, focused on their work quietly while interacting quietly, building community as they help each other out. There are so many ways to differentiate these. Content, I prefer to use task cards for write the room activities as one of my fun ways to learn math facts. Getting students up and moving does support your tactile kinesthetic learners, but there are more opportunities here. Provide multiple worksheets to choose from supporting students at different levels of growth, as in my task cards. I've got three different worksheets. One is the number bonds worksheet to support students in connecting the concrete to the representational to the abstract. That's what number bonds are all about. I have an equation bank worksheet, which is simpler to a word bank or vocabulary bank, but with equations. Then of course, there's the blank grid, like a standard task card worksheet, or post multiple strategies around the room. And to make it easier, my task cards for each math strategy bundle look different. Or use the same strategy, but post multiple levels of challenge within each strategy. You could use post number bonds for some students or equations for others, addition or subtraction, different unknown number spots. My Write the Room bundles include all of those options for each strategy for lots of fun ways to learn math facts. Process. Write the Room gets student up and moving for kinesthetic learners, as I've mentioned. There's also a collaborative problem solving for auditory learners, an opportunity for that, and engaging task cards for visual learners. For the product aspect of differentiation, students can choose which student recording sheet to use, or you can let them choose which strategy work to work on, depending upon what you have posted around the room. Learning environment, okay? Movement, interaction, fun, fun play like, choice, all of these things will impact the learning environment for your students. Three, Okay, board games with math facts to 20 worksheets are fun ways to learn math facts at home or at school. I have created a board game for each math strategy and they are very simple to use. The spinner and instructions are right on the page and I made them on a regular letter sized paper to easily slip into a binder or sleeve or file folder for storage. However, another teacher shared that they had printed them on black and white and sent them home. Fantastic idea. Meanwhile, Content. As mentioned, I've created a different board game for each math strategy. This alone will differentiate content. content. However, I have also included multiple worksheets and answer keys with each game. This facilitates content differentiation through offering multiple math strategies, choosing addition or subtraction, choosing which unknown number spot or missing number spot to work on within the same strategy. I also like that depending upon which unknown number spot the student is working on, some of the worksheets reveal the patterns within the strategy. This supports inductive learning. Process. Games are social, interactive, visual, and therefore supportive of visual, kinesthetic, and auditory learners. Including worksheets makes them support each of the visual and kinesthetic learner styles even more. Product. For the visual kinesthetic learner, this product, the product may be recording their answers on the worksheets. For the auditory learner, the product may be the, at, at the point at which they actually say the answer 
uh, with the writing it down, merely a part of what they are expected to do to show you they've got it. Learning environment. Games changing change learning environments through engagement, interaction, color, even by the community that is created through the interaction. Hey there again. Thank you for spending this time with me. Just a reminder about the free classroom management checklist. Find the link in the description below. Digital resources are the newest of my fun ways to learn math facts to support differentiation in math. Full confession, as I write this, digital resources are still being developed in my store. I have a few, but nowhere near as many as my other resources. Ironically, the fact that there are a few is an indication of how important digital resources can be for differentiation in math. They are there because even though I prefer to see students using more hands-on activities, I know that digital resources are valuable, so I am working to include them in my store. I just did other things first. In other words, they aren't missing because they aren't valuable, but rather I have started to create them because they are valuable as fun ways to learn math facts. <clears throat> Excuse me. But anywho, content. Once again, you can have students work on any math strategy. For digital resources, I did choose a different design for many of the strategies because it is on a screen. Students are somewhat shielded from the comparison between what they are working on and what their peer is working on. Process. These digital resources are very accessible for the visual learner. They can also be an excellent choice for students who have the mental math down but struggle with fine motor skills or eye-hand coordination and can really excel here with the digital resources. Product differentiation. Students just need to be able to tap a key to share their understanding, which is a boon to many. My digital resources come with the option of allowing the students to print off an award once they have completed the game accurately and successfully. These certificates are fantastic for everything from student-led conferences to portfolios, but they are also just an option. The teacher can choose not to have them printed off. Learning environment. These activities, digital little resource activities, are fantastic on a choice board containing a variety of fun ways to learn math facts. Also, for students who are introverts, they can be a nice option. And although it is important to provide interactive, interactive activities for all those students who have too much exposure to devices, the occasional digi digital resource is a very known activity, a comfort zone activity, if you will. And teaching students to use technology appropriately is a part of the curriculum where I live. So digital resources are a controlled and productive way to facilitate that while providing fun ways to learn math facts. One more word on content differentiation in math. For an added level of differentiation, most of my activities include the option of providing the students with a number line or without. For example, each of the color by code designs come with a number line or without. Each of the three different worksheets in my task cards come with a number line or without. Each of the unknown number worksheets for the board games comes with a number line or without. Choice is an element of fun ways to learn math facts and differentiation in math. So much has been said of each of these activities and yet together they are even more powerful. Choice is an important part of the product aspect of differentiation in math and everything in life. When your students have the opportunity to choose how to show their learning, they are able to do their best. Now, I don't think that that means they only do color by code or only play digital games. I believe that variety is good. However, you can allow them to choose which activity from a group of two activities that are set out that day, or you can allow them to choose solitary or collaborative work twice in a week. Perhaps you can provide a choice board on which they may have to try everything once, but they get to choose the order. And for a bonus, they get to choose their favorite for their bonus activity. So maybe they get to do a color by code twice or a digital resource twice. Maybe the choice is the theme of the color by code or the math strategy they are coloring. What about choosing a number bonds worksheet or task cards or an equation bank worksheet with number sentences for task cards? Maybe they choose a worksheet with a number line or without one. 
can they decide which missing number they want to work on for their board game? Regardless of how you implement choice, you can see that once you choose the right activities for your fun ways to learn math facts, can provide a multitude of options for your students to choose from. The challenge can then be prepping it all. Facilitating differentiation in math with carefully chosen fun ways to learn math facts. Careful curation of your fun ways to learn math facts will provide engagement, build community, and maybe even keep the dreaded math anxiety at bay. Hopefully I've provided some insight into some things to consider as you choose activities. But the challenge of differentiation is often the prep. Drum roll, please. Okay, can't do a drum roll here, sorry about that. I'm about to do a shameless plug for my math resources here. I love children, and as a special ed teacher, I was often concerned for the students because I could see that many of them struggled because they couldn't do the work in front of them. However, as a retired classroom teacher, I also understand the exhaustion and burnout that comes from demanding prep. Each of the activities that I have shared today are intended to engage students and to, and to the teacher to keep burnout at arm's length. They are intentionally mostly print and go. There is some minimal quick cutting for the task cards and perhaps some laminating if you want but they are also more than just a board game, a set of color by code or a set of task cards. My blogs often end with one step at a time and you've got this. These are designed to make it easier to take that differentiation one step at a time with a bit of support from me. All of that plus math fact mastery. Getting started with fun ways to learn math facts. This post has been a long one. Thanks for sticking with it. I tried to cut it into two or more to make it shorter, but it's just such an important topic. My students often cheered for the math block. I love to teach math, and I am sure that that came through. However, I also love to see children play, and productive play was a significant part of our math block. Clearly, each of these activities is so much more than just a game. And of course, they, there are more activities out there that will support differentiation in math, a strong math program. Get started by curating these or other simple prep and go activities. Then, when your classroom is established, dig into the more labor intensive activities if you want. Just take it one step at a time and you will be well on your way towards sharing fun ways to learn math facts. You've got this. Thanks for joining me today. I hope to see you soon. Bye now. One final thank you for sharing your time with me today. I want to encourage you that growth for a teacher is just like growth for a student, one step at a time. Be kind to yourself and congratulate yourself for each step forward that you take. You have been blessed with an amazing calling. The, the challenges are many, but I'm here to support you. You've got this. With my desire to walk with you in mind, I offer one last reminder. If you found this or any other video helpful, I encourage you to download the free classroom management checklist. Find the link in the description below. Thanks for joining me today and I hope to see you soon. Bye now.